Hi, my name is Helena, and today I'm going to be showing you multimodality tools for oncology reporting. We have a two time point FDG PET CT loaded. You can see on this screen the first or most recent uh, time point of PET CT with the PET on the top and the fusion CT as well uh, on the bottom here and the PET MIP. On this side, we see the data tree. This is a thumbnail preview of all of the loaded studies. So we can see we have our second time point here or the previous time point underneath for comparison. We'll look at that in a bit. The way to work through this, so we have this uh, different layouts, different uh, stages of your workflow defined here. This is completely configurable to what you would like. We can do this uh, per, per study. So for FDG, you can have one. For a different scan, you can have others completely configurable to, to your specifications. So maybe we're going to start with looking at the uptake here. So I'm going to use this single click segmentation tool. This tool is really nice and really convenient for use. So we have a flashing preview here of all of the possible regions that I could click. This is an SUV threshold. It's going through the entire scan. Uh, I think I've got four as the threshold here, but you can change that to, to what you'd like. Uh, and then I can just mouse over this one. It shows me the preview there, and I make a click to place that region down. I can keep clicking if I want to, but for me, I'm just going to finish. And we can toggle the label here. And then you get the SUV stats immediately for that region that you've placed. Moving on now to a comparison view. We can see we've got the current time point on the top still, and we have the previous time point underneath. We can see a, a similar looking uh, patch of uptake Let's just zoom into that. And so for comparison, we could copy the region across, or in fact, we could redo uh, the same uh, SUV4 segmentation, click there, and we can see the stats for direct comparison on the images. We can also see this in a graphical output as well. So here we have uh, those same scans with the MIP and coronal views. We have a stats table showing you comparison, but also we can just toggle this column chart. Uh, maybe I can show that in a split view as well. So we can see the SUV change over time. We can see this is the change plus 19% in this case for SUV mean, but you could change this quite easily to be SUV max if that's what you prefer to report. So to finish, we could take a screenshot here uh, just with this secondary capture button that then appears over here in the data tree. You can double click to check it if you want, and then we can save that to center packs. When these studies are loaded, Hermia checks whether they are acquired simultaneously or whether it needs to do a registration to align the studies together. Of course, we have two different dates of, of PET scan here, so we need to do a registration, so it will automatically do that for you. That takes just half a second on the way in, so you don't even notice. The studies just are shown to you, already aligned. You can, of course, edit that registration if you need to. So it will use the whole study for that. It will look for the whole body to try to line them up perfectly. But in some places, such as the liver, we can see that the CT was taken at a different portion of the breathing motion. So the liver doesn't quite line up properly in this case. Here we have a really innovative solution to deal with this problem. We can use our tool called focused registration. And that means we can just put a sphere so you can choose the size. I'm going to choose 10 centimeters here. This sphere redoes that automatic registration, just rigid, so translation and rotation only. But it focuses only on the sphere. So I'm just going to choose this one. And you'll see there it's just jumped. So it's done, redone that registration to perfectly now match that portion of the liver. Of course, now a different part is going to be going to be wrong. So as I triangulate down to the base of the liver here, this bit now doesn't quite match properly between the two studies. So we can repeat um, or we can just we have a shortcut key as the R key. You can hit the R key on the keyboard uh, and it will line it up for this portion now. So if we want to check that the tumor is in the same place on both studies, hit the R key, and then you can be sure that you're comparing like for like uh, when you're looking between these two scans. Also, if this focused registration doesn't do the job, we have full manual registration, which is really easy to use. We can just use this 
uh, manual co-registration tool at the top here. Uh, we get this uh, sort of steering wheel look, so I'm just clicking and dragging to move the, the top scan relative to the bottom one. You can also grab on the edge of the steering wheel to rotate in any of the views, so in this view and this view, and you can see it's doing a live uh, interpolation in the other views to show you how they will look uh, as well. And of course, we can move the center point of, of both of these things too. For this case, it's a more difficult task to draw the regions because there's such extensive disease. So this is a Gallium 68 PSMA scan. Uh, we can use the global threshold tool to help here. So I activate the tool and you see the flashing preview of what the threshold will be. We can just stick with that or if we want to, we can click and drag. This is an SUV threshold going through the whole patient. As you can see, we've got this really nice visual preview of what you're going to get in your region. So it's possible to really uh, select exactly what you want. So let's, uh, let's leave it there. Immediately, we get the SUV stats for the region, including the, the max, the mean TLG. Uh, but there is a problem. So we have also included uh, this normal uptake in the kidneys. But we can get rid of that with the blob splitter. So I activate the blob splitter. I'm going to click on one of the kidneys and then hit the delete key to get rid of that uptake. And the same thing for the other kidney and delete. Uh, maybe we also have some, some uptake uh, here as well in the digestive uh, tract, but we can check that if we want. So let's bring in the CT. So I'm going to just click and drag and fuse. So super easy to, to change the view and just check on this fusion here that that is uh, part of the, uh, the, the small or the large intestine there, um, it is. And so I'm gonna blob split it out. So click and delete and that bit's gone as well. Uh, so let's take off the, the CT. I don't wanna see that anymore. And now we're back. And so we have our region now, just including the disease uh, and we can check our, our stats for that. So this is a really nice way of being able to uh, follow up the patient, check response to therapy uh, to see if the patient is improving or not. Tracking the change in SUV over time is super easy with Hermia. This is a lutetium 177 scan. In fact, it's four time points uh, after four cycles of lutetium dotatate therapy, which we have reconstructed with SUV. So I'm just going to go through and highlight and sort of select these regions. So I use single click segmentation again. We get this nice preview and I choose the one that I want. I'm going to move on to the next point. This one again. Go down to the next scan and to the last one. Now let's also take a look at this uptake in the liver. I put it down here and then move over to this one. And then this time we don't have enough uptake here to make the threshold, but I can just use a different tool. Let's use the ellipsoid in this case, centering it on that little bit of uptake and then just dragging it out to the size that we want. Maybe that. Okay, so we have all the regions that we want now and we can show them in this column chart. So immediately it has shown you, let's choose the SUV max to look at. It has automatically matched up the regions with each other over time. Using AI, it has worked out which region goes with the others. And it shows you the change in those regions compared with the previous one. So it's perfectly worked out that it wants to compare these ones at the top or with each other, that's this one. And then these ones further down with each other, that's this graph. We can also load any kind of spec CT. This is a bone spec CT that's been reconstructed with the Hermia reconstruction. And we are also showing the volume render of the CT in this view. So on the two left-hand panels, we've got the uh, AMAP, it's called. So we're using the CT to help guide the reconstruction uh, in the Hermia software. So that's the AMAP reconstruction by itself for the bone spec scan and um, then in the fusion view with the CT. And this is compared with a standard OSEM reconstruction. So you're really able to see the difference in quality of, of the reconstructed scans. It's very easy to manipulate this view to see what you need to see. 
So we can uh, take a zoom in maybe on some of these spinal lesions. We can also just very easily uh, bring up this tool to help rotate uh, looking around. So super easy to, to zoom in on, on what you need to do is do a reorientation uh, and really get as close as you need to to look at your patient scan. We can also handle PET MR data. One of the difficult things technically with this kind of data is just the huge amount of images that are produced by a PET MR scanner. The software is designed to handle these really quickly and easily. We make use of the graphics card to really speed up this handling. So you can see this is everything that we've got loaded uh, down on the left hand side. So a lot of images, super easy to, to look at the preview of it to decide what you need to look at if it's not clear from the description. Uh, so let's take a look at some images. I'm going to use the search box here to find uh, the, the haste MR sequence. Let's grab these four bed positions and just drag them into the viewport there. So immediately now we can take a look at this. Let's, uh, let's make a fusion with some of the PET images. So let's bring in, search for AC and see what we've got. Maybe, uh, maybe this, uh, have a look at that and make a fusion. Okay, that's just the, the prostate view there. Uh, maybe we can also take, I'm going to hide that one and find the whole body. This one. Make a fusion there. We also have in this sequence uh, a number of the uh, MR specific oriented views. Uh, so let's find one of the high res images of the prostate. Where are they going to be? Let's use these ones. Okay, that's the transaxial. So I'm going to grab that and fuse it on this side. So we can see here that uh, the software has recognized that it's not in the same orientation as uh, the, the pets. Uh, and so it's oriented it correctly on the diagonal uh, relative to the standard pet orientation. And you're able to, to view it really nicely with the pet overlaid. There's actually no limit to the number of images that you can view simultaneously in the viewer. So you can just keep dragging and adding um, as you want. Let's have a look at these dynamic images. So we have some dynamic pets also acquired uh, with this patient. I'm just going to take a zoom in on this. So we can play the frames through just by scrolling here and you can see it's playing that dynamic image through with the MR uh, in the background. We can also do some quantitation. So let's put down a few regions. It's going to put an ellipsoid region down on this side, maybe on this side as well. Let's put one here just for demonstration. So we get the stats uh, immediately, but a nice thing to do here is look at the time activity curve. Uh, you can just pick that in a split view if you want. So really easy to see then the change in these regions over time. And as you click and drag, it's going to update that as well. So really easy to, to work with, very quick to, to see what's going on for your patient. A really nice thing about the Homeo software is that it's totally configurable to suit your needs. So let's make a new workflow. Click the button, make workflow one. OK, let's add a stage. So you can add any number of stages, whatever layout you'd like. But maybe these layouts are not good for you. So let's make a new layout. We can choose here to split the grid maybe into four. Maybe we want to move this to here, split this further into two. So very easy, very flexible. Um, very easy to choose exactly what you want. Now we can populate this with the views. So we've got uh, transverse uh, viewports. Uh, let's put a coronal uh, over here. The different colors on this side indicate that it's going to be a different set of images that's uh, filled into these. Let's put a sagittal one here. Let's put a MIP down in here. And uh, let's put another MIP over here, there we go. So let's say that that's uh, happy um, with what we've got configured for, for images. And then we can choose what uh, text that we have overlaying those images. So we can choose to have the patient name, the patient ID, uh, any of the window level stuff, any of the other options, maybe the orientation directions and the cube. 
um, maybe the fusion triangulated value, let's have a color bar on this one, let's have that docked. So lots of choice, and you do that for every single one of these differently, if, if you'd like. Uh, let's save this as a new layout one. Click Save. So now that's in my first stage there. At this point, I can set up the matching for how the software is going to load the input data into this layout. So I'm going to add a pet layer here. I'm going to take it as the, the latest study, so study number one, counting from latest to earliest. If I wanted to here, I could type in a rule, so I could type in to, to find the TOF reconstruction or the PSF or QClear or whatever keyword you have in your reconstruction um, series description, you can put that in. You can also use logic in this to rule out certain things. So very configurable, very powerful for setting up exactly what you want here. Uh, so let's leave that as the pet. Or actually, maybe we can put that as a pet and a, a CT. So take the CT from that same time point as well. And this other one, let's choose the pet and let's do it from the, um, the earlier time point, so time point number two. So it's really nice that in this way, you actually don't have to choose uh, which studies you want or which images exactly you want to load. You can just select at the folder level, including all the patient images, and just put it into the application. And then it will be sorted out according to these rules that you've just set um, for how the images are displayed. So if I save that, we can now take a look at what we've made. And we can see this is the layout we ended up with. And if I'd configured multiple stages here, this is the stage one, they would appear underneath stage two, stage three, etc. So super easy uh, for you to set up your own layouts to use for reporting. Thank you for watching this video and for your interest in Hermia software.